Uh, welcome. This is my first time at Bar Camp, so I thought I'd have a go and try and say something today. Uh, my name's Brett, uh, and I'm going to talk about crowdfunding, uh, specifically crowdfunding videos and why they're important, uh, and a few things that you should be looking at including in a crowdfunding video. Um, as part of my background, uh, I studied graphic design, web design in uni at university. I did some journalism as well. Uh, and I've just, and I've been doing a bit of writing, uh, a bit of blogging on crowdfunding. Uh, so you can find you know, a few articles and stuff around that uh, I've written in the space. Uh, I've also just launched a crowdfunding platform, Sproutback. Uh, so we launched in January this year. Uh, that was probably eight months of preparation to get to that point. I think it was about this time last year that we registered domain names, all of that sort of stuff. Uh, and in yeah, January, we launched. So we're gaining traction. Um, I think we had three new projects go up last week uh, and just trying to build on that space. Um, in that time, though, I've noticed that there's quite a few projects that don't have crowdfunding videos. Uh, and it's just something that you know, can often seem like an afterthought in a, in a project. And I just want to reiterate how important it is and why, and sort of a few reasons why you should be looking at having a crowdfunding video. Um, I could chat about crowdfunding in general happily, I ramble on for hours, but um, you know, I've picked a rather specific topic today. Uh, and given that, I sort of am assuming that there's a bit of knowledge already about crowdfunding if you've come to listen to this. Uh, so I won't be going into too much depth on, on the background of crowdfunding in general. Um, Yes. Oh, excellent. That's my first Kickstarter video, and I think uh, when Craig approached me to do that, I was like, "Do you know that's a whole genre of filmmaking now? Is the Kickstarter video?" So. Uh, a hundred percent. Yes. Great. So well, I watched um. <laughs> That's it. No, no, no. no I um, I already backed Craig's project this morning and watched his video as well. Um, so I thought, brilliant. That's and he did a lot of the the setup for me as well on, you know, some of the language and stuff in crowdfunding. So that's something I can I can skip over with this. Um, one of the things that Craig did mention were the Kickstarter stats on videos. Um, that about 50% of projects with a video uh, are likely to reach their funding goal, and only 30% without a video reach their goal. Uh, with my bit of maths, I came up at sort of one and a half times or one and two thirds times better to, to have a video. I want to point out that that is just a stat. So it doesn't sort of take into account like projects. It doesn't compare the same project with a video and the same project without a video. Uh, and it doesn't look at the thought that maybe projects with videos are all around better prepared. Uh, Having said that, I do highly recommend a video, and I'm going to tell you four reasons now why I think that's the case. Um, and to kick it off with, they're, they're easy to watch. You know, as someone coming to a project, as a viewer, um, it's much, much easier to watch a short two or three minute video than it is to read through a page and a project description. Um, there's a Nielsen Norman report from about 20 years ago that said that only about 16% of people read every word on the website, uh, a lot of them skim through, and that's been backed up you know, in the last few years. Last year, uh, the group came out and said that only about 33% of people are still reading by the time they get to the fourth paragraph on a page. So you know, if I was going to make a recommendation, I would say do a two or three minute video rather than hope that people are still hanging around by the, the fourth and fifth and sixth paragraph, because there's quite a lot of detail to get into in a crowdfunding video, and being easy to watch it's just the first step. You want to eliminate as many barriers as you can to someone's backing your project. And if they have to trawl through information, that's just one more step that they have to go through before they hit that pledge button. Um, the second sort of reason, I guess, is that same point, but how it applies to you. It's a lot easier for you to get some information across about your project. Uh, so, you know, you've got, you know, it's, it's almost impossible for a band to say this is what we sound like, this is our kind of music in writing. 
where, and why would you bother when a 30 second clip can do it so much better? So I would say, you know, there's, there's certainly more projects that it applies to, but all projects should look at having a video. Uh, last year, the macro lens came out. It was a lens for a smartphone, so uh, it was kind of a rubber band thing. It had a lens on it. You slid it over a smartphone, and then you could take macro pictures. Um, if you hadn't heard of the macro lens, you might have a bit of an idea of what I'm trying to you know, get across. Uh, but if I was to get it out of my pocket and say that it's a rubber band with a lens on it, and you slide it over a phone and line up the lenses, and then you can take macro pictures, you've got a much better idea of what I'm talking about. And that's you know, five, ten seconds that I've explained something so that now you can see exactly what you're supporting, what you're backing. Um, and that's enormously useful, you know, rather than heavy, heavy text. So that's, I guess, the same reason as the, the first reason, but how it applies to you, getting that information across. Um, and there's so much more you can tell from that. So, you know, you, there's things that you don't even realise you're picking up from seeing a video of a product. You can see the kind of material it's made of, out of the quality, uh, how heavy you might feel in someone's hand. You know, you can sort of tell those things from a video that haven't been said or implied, but it's something that you just pick up on top of those extra things that are pointed out. Uh, thirdly, uh, is sharing a video. So a video is like a short mini trailer of your whole project. Uh, and like a movie trailer, it can be seen as a standalone part of your project, a bit of marketing and promotion. So while, you know, if you were going to share a reward that you backed a project with, sort of this less context around it, whereas if you share a video, you've got a mini component of your whole campaign in that one part. So it works as standalone, you know, media, promotion, that kind of thing. Uh, and on top of that, it's great for social media. So if you share a link to your project on Facebook, you share a link on Twitter, um, that's great and I definitely recommend it, but you should also be sharing a video because a video you can watch inside the platform you know, you can be scrolling through Facebook, play a video, you're still in Facebook, you don't have to be taken away like you would to a project. In Twitter, you can play a video directly in the app. Again, you don't have to go outside of that. And it's just, again, about making less steps for someone to hear about your project, to, you know, share your project as well, to get to that pledge button. So it's a, being able to share that video as a, its own piece is really useful. Uh, I guess... Those first three points are pretty common to all videos. I mean, I could say the same about a cat video. It's easy to watch. You know, you get an idea of what the cat's doing from the cat video. It's easy to share. Um, but this fourth point that I want to make is probably the most important one for a crowdfunding video particularly. And it's the opportunity to build a rapport with your audience. So we're talking about showing yourself on a video, a bit of your background story, um, and that really helps to break down the wall between you and people that are going to back you. So people are much more inclined to support a project when they know the face behind it. If they can see someone and go, look, check out this cool guy. He's doing this amazing stuff you know, in this new space. Um, here he is. This is his background. You can see him. And it builds up that it sort of legitimizes your project when you can say, this is me. This is the stuff that I've been working on. Here's a prototype of it, this is me using it, and you can thank your audience. That way later on down the track when people are writing comments, making suggestions, as they do with a crowdfunding uh, project, that kind of thing, then they know who they're talking to. When they get a response from you and say, thanks very much for supporting us, or you know, what a great idea, we'll look at including that in the, another iteration, then they know who they're hearing from. And it sort of helps to build that community. They're more inclined to share, and you know that converts into pledges further down the track. And so it's just a big part of you know the reasoning behind why you should have a video. Um, I guess that basically covers the importance of a video. I just wanted to say that first because while it may sound obvious to have a video, there are just so many projects that wait until the last minute or don't consider it to be a major part of their project, when really it should be. And it doesn't have to be difficult. Um, production value 
isn't necessarily what people are looking for in a crowdfunding video. Uh, and the fact that you've got you know, a video camera in your pocket just makes it so much easier. So an iPhone is perfect for a crowdfunding video. Uh, there's apps on there, so you can edit it, you can put in, um, you know, merge a few clips together, have your voice running over the top, and you can do it all in your hand on your phone and then upload it straight from there to YouTube or Vimeo, wherever it might be. Um, having said that, that the production value doesn't necessarily have to be that good, that, you know, that's fine. But that's not to say that you shouldn't care about the content that goes into your video. Uh, write a script, definitely write a script. Have something in mind of what you're going to say. Uh, if it turns out that your video is too dark, you can do it again. You, know, that you don't want to have a dodgy looking video where you haven't put much thought or effort into it. And it can have the reverse effect where an unorganised, um, unrehearsed video can get people sort of offside and make them think that maybe you're not the right person to go through with this project. And you really want to keep them, them on board and just be clear in what you're explaining. Yeah, yep. Um, a lot of those projects that do, a lot of the projects that do have the slick sort of videos, um, they're looking for the large sums of money. So, you know, if you have, someone's not going to sp necessarily spend five grand on a video to raise one. Um, and you, you can sort of tell as you scale up the projects that are looking for more money, you can see the production value of a video go up with that. Um, so I would say that the slick looking ones that are looking for lots of money, people are happy to support because, you know, because they, they see that, you know, that they're after a, a lot of money, they want to keep it themselves, they don't want to have to bend to venture capitalists necessarily. Um, but certainly, you know, that's a good point. And the ones, there are some that do have a slick video that aren't after much money and often they'll say, Big shout out to our mates, you know, that did the video for us. Um, you know, they did it pro bono, or you know, you follow them and they'll make a video for you, that kind of thing. So there's some explanation as to why you've got such a yeah, if if it looks like it doesn't fit, then there's usually an explanation behind it. Um, I'm going to quickly go into what to include in a video. Uh, this is probably the important stuff if you're, if you're thinking about making a campaign, uh, the format to go through, uh, and I'll just cover the, the points quickly. Um, you want to include yourself. So that goes back to building a rapport with the audience. You want to make sure that at the start of the video, you're there and you're saying hi. And at the end of the video, you're saying thank you. People, you know, show your face, be sincere. Um, Craig's video does it uh, this morning. You know, he says, he introduces himself, he says thank you at the end, and that's perfect. That's the kind of relationship building that you want to, you want to convey in a video. Uh, you also want to talk about your project. This seems obvious, but the amount of times I've seen a pro project where, you know, it's a 360 video of what they're doing, um, you know, they're showing heaps of photos and 3D renderings of it, but they go into the detail. You know, if you're making a new teapot, say why it's new, say why it's different. Don't let people come to their own conclusions just by looking at it or just by having mentioned it. Um, there are quite a few videos that don't, that don't say that what they're doing. They ask for money without an explanation of you know, what they're trying to create or where it's going. Um, you definitely want to ask for money as well. So you want to ask for your funding. So you, you've introduced yourself, you've spoken about your product, and then you ask people. So you don't necessarily want to leave it to them and you don't want to beg, but you say, you know, please help us out. And that extra communication helps to encourage donations. So it's just a short line, please help us out, we need your money, this is where the money's gonna to go towards, which is the next thing you should be including. So you wanna explain where the money's going and how that's gonna help you complete this project. Again, that builds the confidence in your ability to continue the project, uh, it lets people know that you've thought about what you're going to do, you haven't just arbitrarily asked for $20,000, you want you know, this much for making dyes, you need this much for uh, packaging and shipping, that kind of thing. And that, again, that, I've always come back to this, building a community, making sure that 
they are confident in your ability. Um, rewards, of course, you want to talk about you know, what you can offer as an a reward. You don't want to go through them all. Uh, 32 Veronica Mars rewards is too many to, to talk about. You want to talk about the ones that include your product, if that's what you're doing. And maybe you feel the ones that are harder to explain than just the short description they have in the side of your, your crowdfunding campaign. Uh, no one wants to sit through an awesome one and a half minute video and then listen to 15 minutes of rewards. They can work that out for themselves. They know that you're going to be offering something. Uh, so just pick out a few key ones, mention those, and then say there's others to check out. Uh, you want to include any extra stuff at this point. So if there's something particular that you haven't mentioned that isn't covered in all of that, uh, maybe delivery times, you can include a little bit of that. Don't overwhelm your audience, though. There's, you know, if they want extra information, they know that it's there in your description, or at least it should be there in your description, uh, and you don't want to take up too much of their time. You know, two to three minutes is a really good video length time. Uh, and importantly, at the end, say thank you. You know, thank your audience. Be really, you know, sincere, get them on board. Thank you for watching our video. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you for donating. Um, you know, these people are helping you to go through with your, your passion and your dream, so be grateful for sort of the opportunity that they're helping to give to you. A um, couple of quick notes, like I said, keep it short. Uh, avoid copyrighted material. Um, you know, you don't want to, there's plenty of free music sources out there if you want some background music for your, for your project. Uh, keep it personal. That's really about building that engagement with uh, the people that are going to be backing your project. And have other videos if you need them. So save a gameplay video for its own standalone video. Mention it in your project video and then say, check out the gameplay video we've added as well further down. Check out a video that demonstrates our fashion models and shows off you know, what we're doing. Check out our production line video. So you don't necessarily need to include all of these in your original campaign video. You want that to be, like I say, a standalone uh, piece of marketing material as well. And then just mention, you know, if you're going to support this project level, check out our video that explains what the reward is, all of that kind of thing. Um, I guess that's basically it for a quick overview of a crowdfunding video. I um, tried to time it for 20 minutes or so, uh, and I think that I'm about there. Uh, but certainly, if anyone has any questions on a video or crowdfunding in general, I'm happy to, to answer some of those now. Yeah, I would say definitely two to three minutes is a good fit. So anything sort of longer than three minutes and you're looking at, um, you know, are you giving too much information? Have people already got a grasp of what you're offering? So when you start to get longer than that, it's harder to share. People don't always hang around for the end of a video. Uh, I know that I start watching videos, you know, as I scroll through Kickstarter and that kind of thing. And if it's 10 minutes long, I sort of will skip through bits of it. And you, you just don't want that. If you can get your message across in two or three minutes, that's, that's ideal. Um, yeah, if that, that answers, yeah. Uh, is it important to include an element of sort of continuous branding if people aren't going to stick through to the end? If you take two minutes to say, you've got to buy my new um, hemp sneakers, if you're not getting to that point and people are switching off, at some point you've got to keep referencing back. Is it important to do that as you go through? If you need to do a longer video, um, that's important. So there's more ways, because of the, the video format, you've got audio and video. So there's a lot of ways you can do that. I uh, highly recommend, like I say, an introduction of yourself at the start. But if you can avoid being a talking head for the whole three minutes, you know, you try and include some pictures of your product, um, include pictures of people using it, uh, pictures or video of people using it, video of it being manufactured, and you can continue your voice over the top of that, and that sort of helps to reinforce what the project is the, the entire time, as well as get across that additional information where you don't necessarily need to be seeing a person's face for, for the entirety of it. I think that. 
That's true. Yeah. What do you think about humour in videos? Do they add to it or do they sort of create a barrier that uh, comes from a direct, honest conversation with, the, with your potential funders? I think that uh, a lot of that will come down to the project. Humour, I think, is great in a lot of videos. So if you're... Um, it, it's very much project specific. So if your project is for, um, like, the, I think, a, a shaker spoon, uh, which was developed for people with uh, shakes and Parkinson's, so it counteracts movement so that people can, you know, eat food and not have to worry about it falling off their fork, that kind of thing, that is more a tone of... Um, you know, stick to the tone of your product. So if you're doing that, you say, look, we're helping people out. This is a charity thing. I think those guys at the moment are looking for crowdfunding money so that they can match it and produce two spoons and send one to someone in financial need. Uh, so their video obviously has no, you know, no sort of overt humour in it. Uh, it's just, you know, help us, you know, we want to care. Um, Veronica Mars, one again, was packed full of humour, you know, references and that sort of thing. There's an example of a video that didn't necessarily follow a strict format. Uh, it was five or six minutes long, had heaps of humour in it, but they had an existing audience and people could latch onto that humour and, you know, there was always references to past Veronica Mars, the, the TV series, that kind of thing. So it's very project specific, I would say. Uh, but certainly don't avoid humour if it, if it matches what you're trying to offer. Right. Um, I took a lot more footage than one video, of course. Yep. Uh, should you do more than one video? Should you, you know, sort of roll them out every week and show more to different things? If, certainly if they're updates. So uh, a really common one to do is to say if a project reaches its goal sort of midway through, a lot of people will get the ball rolling on the next step of the project and they might, might say, um, here's some footage of the production line starting up or here's, you know, what we want to offer as a stretch goal. Maybe you're halfway through the, your funding and you say, look, thanks for all of your, your support. So it can be just a thank you video. Um, I would certainly say that, yeah, video updates are a great thing to include and that's something else that can be shared again. You know, something that you can engage in that existing community of people that have backed you. So I see you've already sent out an update to early backers of your, your project. So that's, that's a great example of that. So really early saying thank you. And then those people are going to say, great, Craig's really involved in this project. Uh, he's on top of things. I'm going to tell my mates about it. And it's a big uh, involvement in the community by, by doing that. So certainly, yeah, video updates throughout the process. Um, as long as they're you know, meaningful or you think that the audience will benefit from it, definitely do that. Uh, anything else or no? I think we've got Rory next on startup, so I recommend you hang around for that, particularly if you're interested in crowdfunding because a lot of that will apply as well. Uh, thanks very much.